Well, God's grace and His mercy and His peace be to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Good morning and Merry Christmas again to you. So um, I'm going to need a little help from my acolytes here. Okay, we've got Han and John. All right, and uh, we're going to talk about light and glory today. And I am guessing that all of you recognize that picture. Okay, what is that a picture of? <coughs> Amazon. So it just so happens I have an Amazon box here. Can you come up here? All right, you guys bring this back to your seat. You can just do this all from your seat. But take the mic, so if I ask you a question, you can answer it. And it's on, so now if you whisper things to your brother or your sister, we're all going to hear it, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I'm not quite sure why I'm losing my voice, but all of a sudden it's happening. It was fine earlier. So we get used to seeing these Amazon boxes. And when you get an Amazon box... All right. If you are expecting it, you're expecting to see whose name on the box. Yours. But if you didn't order it and you get that box, then it gets a little exciting, right? And there are some basics of what you want to know when you open that box. Okay? You want to know, first thing, whose it's from. But then you want to know, what's inside. Okay, so let's find out what's inside. All right, so Hannah's going to open that up. All right. And inside we see a, what's in there? A present. Okay. So now when you guys get that present and you have it under your tree, there's some basic questions that you have. You want to know who is it from and who is it to? And, of course, you want to know what's inside. Well, and, and bear with me, maybe this isn't the most perfect illustration, but it seems to me that from the time of the announcement to the, by the angels to the shepherds to the time of Simeon is kind of the difference between an Amazon box and the gift that is inside. Okay? In other words, the angels spoke to the shepherds and they told them that there is good news of great joy for all the people. But to you and to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. I'm not saying that the shepherds didn't get it, but I think they might have had a hard time recognizing that it was for all the people. Okay? What does it say on that tag there? From God to all. From God to all people. That is the gift of Christmas. Okay? It is from God to all people. Now, the first question is who is it from? It is from God. It's from God. So God is the giver of this gift that we have received. If we look at, there's the tag, to and from. If we look at the scripture, it says, my eyes have seen, Simeon is saying this, my eyes have seen your salvation. In other words, Simeon has taken the package out of the box and is announcing to the world who this is from, who it is to, and what the gift is. Okay? And he starts by saying, my eyes have seen your salvation. He's singing this to God. My eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared. Yahweh, the God of all creation, who cared so much about his creation that he sent a Savior. That's who the you is in that story. There were things in the world that the world, that the people of the world could not overcome, 
and save themselves from. Some of those things like evil and sin, they tried to overcome. But for other things like death, there was no hope. And God knew that, so God sent a gift to the world to save the world. Now, there are still things in our world today that we cannot overcome by our own actions. Yet sometimes in our boldness and in our pride, we continue to try to save ourselves. It doesn't take too much history or too much study in today's world politics and topics to see that. A hundred years ago, the world was just finally starting to recover from World War I, which was known as the Great War and the War to End All Wars. You see how the world is trying to save itself? Today, it doesn't take long on the news to hear that we must save our world. And we certainly should be good stewards of the world that God has given to us and entrusted to us. But to save it is not from us. It's from God, whose world and whose gift it is in the first place. So, from God... And then it says to all peoples. You look at Simeon's words. Mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence, literally in the face of all peoples. In other words, for Simeon, while God had promised him that he would see this promised Savior named Jesus before he left this world, the gift wasn't just for Simeon. Jesus was not just for Simeon to see, but for all peoples to see before the face of all peoples. All people for all time, Jews and Gentiles, the people of God and the people of the nations. It was the same message proclaimed to the shepherds in the field. I'm moving the picture. Here we go. Here we go. From Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. The angel said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for. All the people. We kind of mentioned this just before. If there had been any mistaking by the shepherds who had heard a Savior had been born to them, I'm not saying that there was, Simeon made it clear. Not privately out in the fields, but publicly at the temple for everyone to hear that the gift is for all people. The you that Christ was born to the shepherds was not just for the shepherds. It was for Simeon and Anna and the young and the old, to Jew and to Gentile, to you and to me. There is no distinction. As many of you as were baptized into Christ Jesus, as many of you who have received the gift of God, of Jesus Christ, you've put on Christ. Think of it as you open that package and it was clothes, right? But they were clothes of righteousness. The clothes, the wedding clothes that the King, that the host has provided in Jesus Christ. And so as we have received that, we have put on Christ, and there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male and female, for you are all one 
in Christ Jesus. The gift is for all people. Now, the question is, what is the gift? What's inside? You guys can go ahead and open it. And I'm not like Amber. I didn't not wrap another present in there. All right. Why don't you stand up so everybody can see that? All right. And that's not just any cross. What does it have on there? The nativity scene. The nativity scene in the cross. And that's because the birth of our Savior, he wasn't just a child that was born. The child that was born brought salvation. The child that was born went to the cross. Simeon talked about your salvation that you have prepared. The salvation was in the person of Christ. This is God. When you see that child, when you hear this story, what Simeon is saying is this is God saving the world from which it cannot save itself. This is God saving the world from its sin and separation that is caused by sin that keeps us apart from God. This is God saving the world from the power of the devil to continue to deceive the world and lead us away from God with impunity. This is God taking all humanity from the grip of Satan and giving them hope and something to hold on to. And for those who cling to such hope, Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. The world was firmly in Satan's hand. But Jesus went to the cross. And by His grace, He put us in the Father's hand. And not only has Satan lost his grip on us, but so too has death. I give them eternal life, Jesus said. Or as the Apostle Paul said, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Simeon would give a glimpse of the price of this gift, of what it cost. You know, you're not supposed to ask, how much did you spend on that gift, right? But God tells us what he spent on the gift of salvation. He told Mary, a, peer, a spear or a sword will pierce your own soul too. A sword will pierce your own soul too. Also, the gift of salvation for the world cost God his son. For Jesus, the son, it cost him everything. His life, his own soul, his own relationship with his father, sacrificed for all the peoples for all peoples on the cross. We were saved because Jesus died, but we were also given life because Jesus rose again. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus said. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. That's the gift of salvation. But you know, sometimes 
you open a gift, right? And I'm sure this didn't happen to anybody this Christmas. You open a gift and you look at it and the first thought is, what is this for? What am I going to do with this? Did anybody? You don't want to raise your hand because it was the person next to you who gave you that gift, right? But that's a question that sometimes gets asked. So when we look at that cross, <clears throat> I'm not sure that that's the question we always ask when we get that gift. What is it for? What do we use the cross for? When we get a cross like this one, we might put it on our wall. Or, if we get maybe a little bit smaller one, something like this, we might wear it around our neck. Is, is that what the cross is for? Is the cross there to just put something to show on our walls and adorn our necks? What is the gift of God's salvation, the gift of the cross of Jesus Christ for today? Well, in Simeon, in Simeon's day, he tells us what this gift of salvation was for. He said it was for two things. He said, it's a light, <clears throat> excuse me, a light for revelation of the Gentiles, and two, it's a glory of the people Israel. So what does that mean? As Simeon spoke these words, he was saying that the salvation that would come through Jesus would be like a light. A light that would reveal to the nations, to the whole world, God's love for them and His call to them. Jesus, when He came into this world, was a call to the whole world. For them to turn from their sins and turn to God because God had come to them, to love them, to take them from the darkness of sin and evil and death that drove their fears and their frustrations and their failures. Jesus would be their light to see God as He wanted to be seen, a light for revelation. He wanted to be seen as a just and yet loving, gracious, merciful, kind God, and that's what God's salvation provided. At the same time, Jesus and His salvation would be the glory of the people of Israel because it was through them that God sent this gift. My wife and daughter are expert shoppers, especially for our grandchildren. They get it. They know what to do. They have great ideas and and I know they have a lot of fun doing it as well. And so when the grandchildren, the older ones that is, when they get a gift, a great gift, because Brenda and Hannah have thought something out, here's the really good part. I get a big hug. I didn't have anything to do with it. I get a big hug because it was under the tree and I was there and it had my name on it. I am getting the glory for being a part of the gift giving, even though someone else was responsible for the gift. For Israel, in spite of all their faults and all their flaws, they were the ones that God chose to be the bearers of this incredible gift. Theirs was the glory for being the instruments of God's grace. That was Simeon's message. But what about our world today? What about for us? What is God's salvation still for? 
and, and understanding it not as a gift just for me, but as a gift for all people. What is salvation for? Maybe we should see that the roles have reversed a little bit from the time of Simeon. See, we are now the ones that God has called His people. Once, we were not a people. But now, Peter writes, we are the people of God. We are a holy nation. We are set apart to proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called us out of darkness and into His marvelous light. We are the bearers of good news of salvation for all peoples. In Isaiah, and then again in Romans, we hear these words, and maybe you've heard them before. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We're not responsible for the good news. We are just the bringers of it. And yet the messengers, when they bring good news, who gets to receive all the joy and the glory for it? See, that's our privilege. That's what comes with making it known to those looking for a message of hope and peace and joy and love. I think about Israel and I think about the church today. You know, when Jesus came to this earth, Israel was really pretty insignificant as a people. Their land was important because it was a bridge from the north to the south, from from Europe and Asia down to Egypt and into Africa. But as a people, they were seen more as a nuisance than as a nation. Then I think of the early church and the very first follower of Jesus. And you know what the world's view of them was? As a nuisance. They were diligent. They were diligent in their lives and in their message to walk with Jesus. In our world today, it would not be too difficult to find people that have the same opinion of us. We're just a nuisance. We are a steadily shrinking part of our own world. We are constantly, overwhelmingly, being replaced by other priorities and beliefs and values. Yet, we have still been entrusted by God with the greatest gift ever given. Salvation. The gift of His own Son. And our dark world needs the light of salvation that we have been given. And that light is shown in our words and our actions. Isaiah spoke of it. Listen to these words from Isaiah 58 again. Share your bread with the hungry. Bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the dawn. Our dark world needs that light. Salvation and life from God to the world delivered through us. The light of revelation is the way that we will shine the brightest. That will be our glory. 
the month of December, we have been talking about the gift of Jesus, the gifts that we really need. Well, today it's the gift that the world really needs. See, my friends, we are the Amazon that the world really needs. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all of our understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.